Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you how I set up and configure Tmux on my MacBook and use it alongside NeoVim for a really nice development experience on the terminal. For those of you that don't know, this video is a part of a series where I'm going over my workflow and how I configure and set up the tools I use for writing code on a daily basis. In the first video, I talked about how I configure the terminal itself with iTurn2 and OhMyZSH to make it look nicer and also install some plugins. In the second video, I shared with you everything you need to know to configure NeoVim into a really nice editor with features very similar to a modern IDE. And in this third video in the series, I'm sharing with you how I configure and set up Tmux alongside NeoVim for a really awesome combination. Tmux is what is known as a terminal multiplexer, which gives us the ability to manage sessions, windows, and panes inside the terminal. This really comes in handy when we want to organize our coding projects and also gives us the ability to edit our code alongside any other running processes. Before I get started and show you how this works, I want to point out that I have nothing against VS Code or other modern editors. I think they can also be great tools and I don't necessarily shy away from using them if I need to. But having said that, over time I found this specific workflow to be very enjoyable and fun to use. This isn't necessarily true for everyone and that's okay. With that said, let's get into it. I'll also have a link to a blog post with everything I'm gonna be doing in this video and you can copy things onto your own machine. You'll need to make sure you're using a true color terminal like iTerm2 for the colors to work properly and also have Homebrew installed which we'll be using to install Tmux. All right, so the first thing we have to do here is install Tmux. We can install it with Homebrew by doing brew install Tmux. Let's clear this terminal window. Now that we installed Tmux, we can make sure that it worked properly by doing Tmux dash uppercase V. At the time of recording, the latest version of Tmux is 3.3 A. That's what I'm gonna be using. So everything looks good. The next thing we wanna do is in our home folder, we need to create a file that we're gonna use to configure Tmux. To do this, we can do touch, indicate the home folder with the tilde sign, then slash dot tmux dot conf. That should create the file for us. Let's open it up now. I'm gonna be using NeoVim. To open it up, I'm gonna do nvim tilde slash dot tmux dot conf. Now the first thing I want to do is enable proper true color functionality for Tmux. To do this I can do set-g, default-terminal, and then screen-256 color. Now a really important concept in Tmux is called the prefix. The default prefix is control b Essentially what this means is that whenever you want to execute a command with Tmux, you first type out the prefix, control B. But this prefix is honestly not very intuitive, so we're gonna change it to control A instead. To do this, we can do set-g prefix control A, and then we can do unbind C-B to unbind control B, and then bind key C-A send prefix. That should configure it for us. Let's save and quit. I would also highly recommend you change your caps lock key to control. Personally, I barely ever use my caps lock key, but I have to press the control key a lot, especially in Tmux, and I think it's a lot easier to access where the caps lock key is located. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is show you how you can create Tmux sessions. To create a new Tmux session, we can do Tmux new dash S, and then the name of the session, let's just call it session. After we run that, now we're within the tmux session we just created. To exit the session, we can do tmux detach. To see a list of the sessions we've created, we can do tmux ls. And to go back into a specific session, we can do tmux attach dash t and then the name of the session. And we're back in. Let's actually create another session. So let's do tmux detach again. Let's do tmux new dash s session two. Now we're in a different Tmux session called session two. Within Tmux, we can also see all the sessions that we've created. To do this, we have to type out our prefix. So that's control A and then S, which is short for session. Now I can actually navigate through these with J and K, which are our up and down keys in Vim. K is up, J is down. I can go to one of them and then press enter. And I'm in that specific session now. As you can see here in the bottom left corner, we're in the session called session. Now within a session, you have windows and panes. 
A window is basically a collection of split panes. Right now we're inside a TMUX session and we're looking at a window with a single pane. We can add a second pane to this window by splitting it in half. We can do this with prefix, so control A, and then the percent key. Now we've split the window in half and we now have two TMUX panes. We can split horizontally by doing prefix, control A, and then the double quote. These keys for splitting, so percent for splitting vertically and double quote for splitting horizontally are not very intuitive. So let's go ahead and change them to something that's a little bit nicer. I'm just gonna exit here and exit here. And then I'm gonna open the tmux.conf file by doing nvim tilde slash dot tmux.conf. And now we can do unbind percent. And then we're gonna add this line. This will configure the pipe key to split the window vertically, which is a nice way to visualize it. And then we're gonna unbind the quote, which is for splitting horizontally. And then we're gonna add this line so we can use the dash to split the window horizontally, which is also easier to remember because it's a nicer way to visualize it. I also wanna make it easier to refresh the tmux configuration, so I'm gonna add these lines. This will allow us to use the R key to refresh the tmux configuration. Note that we'll only be able to use all these bindings after the prefix. So it'll be control A pipe to split the window vertically, control A dash to split the window horizontally, and control A R to refresh the tmux configuration. Let's save this file and quit. Now let's refresh the tmux configuration to apply these changes. The first time we have to do this, we can't use the R key as I mentioned because that configuration hasn't been loaded yet. So we can do prefix and then colon, and then we can do source dash file and then tilde slash dot tmux dot conf. Now let's test the new configuration. We can do prefix, so control A, and then the pipe key to split vertically, and then prefix, so control A, and then the dash to split horizontally. Awesome, that's working great. Let's close this and close this. Now I wanna make some configuration changes to make it easier to resize panes. Let's open up the configuration file again with tilde slash dot .conf. I wanna add these lines. Essentially what this will do is that we can use J, K, L, and H to resize tmux panes, which are the equivalent of our arrow keys in Vim. So if you're used to using that, then this will come in really handy and be pretty intuitive. I'm also gonna add following line this will allow us to use the M key to maximize a tmux pane. Finally, I want to do set dash G mouse on to enable the mouse within tmux. I do most things in tmux without the mouse, but when it comes to resizing panes, it's often nice to be able to use the mouse for that. Let's save this file and quit. Now we can reload our configuration by doing control A R as we've configured the R key to reload our tmux config. And now let's create some splits. So let's do control A pipe. Control A dash. Now to resize a tmux pane, I can do something like Control A and then press H as long as I like to resize that pane. I can also do something like Control A K, which is for up. Let's do Control A J and Control A L to go to the right. I can also use my mouse here. Finally, I can use the M key to maximize a pane. So I can do Control A M. That'll maximize the pain I'm in. And I can do control A M to bring it back to the original size. Let's close these. All right, the next thing I wanna set up is configuring a nice way to navigate between Tmux panes. To do this, the first thing we have to do is install a plugin, but we need a plugin manager to do this. We're gonna be using TPM, which stands for Tmux Plugin Manager. We can use the following line to clone this repository and add it to the dot tmux folder in our home directory. Now that we've cloned the tpm repository, let's open up the .tmux.conf file again. Let's go to the bottom and then let's add the following line to add tpm itself as a plugin. I'm gonna do zz to center this in my screen. And then I'm gonna add here a section that will be a list of tmux plugins. And the plugin I wanna use for navigating tmux is 
This guy right here is Chris Toomey slash Vim Tmux Navigator. For those of you that have been following along with me in this series, you'll notice that this is the same plugin that I'm using within NeoVim to navigate between split windows. Now we're gonna be using it to navigate Tmux panes as well, and also be able to navigate between NeoVim and Tmux, which is really nice. Then we wanna add the following. This will initialize the Tmux plugin manager. Make sure that you add this line and keep it at the very bottom of the tmux.conf file. Save this, let's quit. Now let's reload the config by doing control A R and then to install the plugin we can do control A shift I. Awesome, the plugin was installed, let's press escape. Let's clear this. Let's create a vertical split by doing control A pipe, a horizontal split by doing control A dash. Now I can navigate between all of these with control H, J, K, and L, which is the same way I navigate within NeoVim. So we can do control K to go up, control J to go down, control H to the left, and control L to the right. To show you how this ties in really nicely with NeoVim, let's open up NeoVim here, I'm gonna create a vertical split, and then I can use the same control H and L to navigate between these vertical splits with a NeoVim and also out to a Tmux pane. Note that you have to be using the same Vim Tmux Navigator plugin within NeoVim. I've configured it this way in the previous video in this series where I've explained my entire NeoVim configuration. The next thing I want to show you is how to create a new Tmux window. To do this, we can do prefix, so control A and then C, and that'll create a new Tmux window. You'll see in the bottom that we have window zero and window one. I can navigate to a specific Tmux window by doing prefix, so control A, and then the number of the window I, I want to navigate to, so zero. Say I want to go back to window one, I can do control A and one. You can rename a window by doing control A comma, let's say I wanna rename this to other dash window, and you'll see here on the bottom that window one is now called other window. You can also navigate between windows by doing prefix, so control A and then N, control A, N, control A, N, I'm just cycling through it, and then you can go to the previous one by doing control A, P, control A, P. To see all of my windows, I can do control A, W, similar to how you can see all of your sessions. And you can see here now I'm seeing two different sessions. First one has two windows. I can move through them with J and K. And the other one has a single window. You can just go to one of these by navigating to it and then pressing enter. The awesome thing about this is you can have anything running in any of these panes. Let's close these two. For example, as a full stack developer, something that's really common for me is that I have my back end project on a single window and my front end project on a separate window and I have several different panes in each of them for my code and for running things. So let's say I want to have my back end code in this window. I have a directory here for a very basic express server, which will just serve as an example. I'm gonna split this in half horizontally. So let's do control A and dash. I wanna resize this a little bit. So let's do control A and J a couple times. That, that's too small, so control A, K. Note that down here in this new pane, my current directory is this slash dev directory, which is the same directory that I created the Tmux session with. By default, the directory you're in when you create a new Tmux session will be the same directory that new Tmux panes and windows will start in. Let's move here to express server as well. Let's clear this. Note that right now the font on my terminal is pretty big for you guys to be able to see this properly, but when I'm actually doing this for my daily work, things are a lot more spacious. Now the first thing I wanna do is open my code in the top pane, so let's go up with Control K, and then I'm just gonna open NeoVim here, so NVim, and then I'm just gonna open the file explorer I have here, open app.js, which is the example server, and then I'm gonna go down with Control J, and I'm just gonna start this server with npm run dev, and as you can see here, now I have the bottom pane with my running code, and the pane above it with my code. If I wanna maximize the bottom pane to see things better, I can do Control A M, 
and control a m to minimize it if i want to maximize the pain with my code which is something i usually do so let's go up with control k and then control a m and now the whole window shows my code Typically when I'm working on my code, I maximize that window, work on the code, and then if I have to see my other panes within the window, I can do Control am and they're back. Now I want to run my front end code in the other window, so let's do Control a n to go to the next window. Let's create another horizontal spit with Control a dash, and then I'm going to resize this a little bit, go up, I'm going to change this to a Next.js front end I have here, which is also just for example, I'm going to do the same in the bottom one, go up, I'm going to open NeoVim, File Explorer, let's go here to my pages, underscore app.js, and the bottom one, I'm going to do the same thing, npm, npm run dev, now I have everything up and running for working on my front end code on this Tmux window and working on the back end code in this other Tmux window. You can really set this up whichever way you like. So I can do control A pipe to create a vertical split here. And then I'm gonna, I move here to express server and I can have something else in this other pane. This can honestly be really powerful and a really nice way to work. We're close to being finished here, but I want to add a couple more Tmux specific configuration settings. I'm going to open the configuration file. I can do nvim tilde slash dot tmux dot conf. All right, so let's go down here, setting where we enable our mouse in line 23. And I'm going to add the following. The first thing here will enable VI mode in Tmux, which will allow us to use Vim movements within Tmux, which is really nice. And then these two lines will allow us to use the V key to start selecting text and the Y key to copy text, very similar to how you do that in Vim. Finally, this setting is one I like to set so that dragging with your mouse to copy something is a bit more intuitive. I'll show you in a second. Let's save and quit here. And then let's reload the Tmux configuration by doing control A R. All right, so what we just configured is specifically for a mode in Tmux called copy mode. You typically use this for when you're scrolling within a pane. So to enable Tmux copy mode, we can do control A and then opening bracket. And now I can use K to go up and J to go down. So that's, that's the VI mode that I'm talking about. You can also use shift K and shift J. That'll keep the cursor in a fixed position. You can also do control U to go up half a page and control D to go down half a page. And you can do control B to go up a full page and control F to go down a full page. I tend to use K and J and shift K and shift J. Now to copy something, we can use V and then do a motion. So go to the end. So you can see here, I just used the dollar sign. Then I can use Y and I just copied that text. I can also copy text by selecting it with my mouse and doing Y. You can also scroll with your mouse, by the way, because we enabled uh, mouse mode, which is nice if you want to use that instead. You know you're in copy mode because of the little box you see on the upper right hand corner with those numbers. That tells you you're in copy mode. You can use control C to exit copy mode. If you just start scrolling with your mouse, it'll enter copy mode automatically, as you can see here on the top right hand corner. All right, we're close to being finished. Let's add a theme to Tmux to make it look a little bit nicer. Let's go to the config file. So nvim tilde slash dot tmux dot com, go to the bottom. Add here the following line, which is a Tmux theme pack. And then after this, we can add the following line to set the theme pack we want to use. In this case, I'm going to be using Paraline slash default slash cyan as the theme pack. You can check this repository for all of the different possible themes you can select here. Let's save this. Let's quit. Now let's install the plugin with control A I shift I actually uppercase I not lowercase and then we can press enter. And now as you can see here at the bottom, we have the new theme configured. The final thing here is that Tmux doesn't save your sessions when you restart your computer. So right now, if I were to just restart my computer, my sessions would be gone. To fix this, we're going to add a couple of plugins. Let's open the config file with nvim tilde slash dot tmux dot conf. Go to the bottom and we're going to add 
the following two plugins. The first is Tmux Resurrect, which will help us persist Tmux sessions after computer restart. And the second one is Tmux Continuum, which will automatically save Tmux sessions for us. So if we're just using Tmux Resurrect, we would have to manually save our sessions before we restart our computer. Tmux Continuum will save them for us every 15 minutes. Great. Now we want to add these two lines. This will set things up so that Tmux Resurrect will capture what is within a pane when it persists the Tmux session and it'll turn on Continuum Restore so that the Tmux Continuum plugin can work properly. Let's save and quit. Let's install these with prefix uppercase I. And that's done, let's press enter. All right guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. By now, if you've been following along with me to set up your terminal environment throughout this series, you should have a really solid terminal-based setup for working on your software development projects. You might have also noticed that I have a new keyboard. I recently just built a wireless, minimalist, and ergonomic keyboard called a Cornet. I don't know if I said that right, but it's been a really nice addition to my workflow, especially when it comes to working with Vim and Tmux like I've showed you guys. I used to use another split keyboard, which I really enjoyed and you might have seen me use it in my other videos. It was a bit bigger and it didn't have Bluetooth. So this guy solves a lot of the problems that I had with my other one. I'm planning on doing a video on this new keyboard I made, talking about my experience making it and how I use it in combination with my Vim and Tmux based workflow. Let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in seeing that. Thank you so much guys for all the support and all the kind comments you've been sending my way. I really appreciate it. Leave a like in this video if you enjoyed it, it really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more content like this from me. See you guys in the next one. Peace.